Hey guys, um, this is just a uh, bonus stream that I'm doing. Um, uh, I don't know, <laughs> on a Thursday night at around six o'clock California time, just because um, I had a couple boxes that were in uh, the closet that were these oversized boxes that I didn't get to when um, I was doing the whole. Uh, the whole um display episode so i'm gonna get to him now uh i just threw up the image of the the magic cow which i think i did in the uh in the display show but it's such a such a fun display such a fun one neat two-sided with the purple cow and those uh those glasses are out there if you if you're looking around and this is not going to just be displays it's going to be other cool things like this which is um as you can see it's still in the mailer which is always fun for a premium and this is a big jolly cream giant head shaped die cut coloring book look at that it still has still has the original fun and color book 50 cents giant 27 by 9 inch and inside it's uh and a lot of times you can tell they uh they didn't necessarily spend the big money on uh, hiring the, the absolute greatest artist for these coloring books. I shouldn't complain because I did a Mr. Toast coloring book with the Color Ink book guys. And uh, I did the best I could, you know, probably not the most, uh, probably not the most gorgeous uh, coloring book the world has ever seen. Actually, I actually have a decent sound this time. This is a little bell brand potato chip sign a couple of different ones corn chips one and this one and i've always looked at this bird and it looks like it's disney so maybe they did a little disney tie-in i don't know i've never been quite sure these next things are also not signs there's something else that i i collect or at least i used to collect and i used to collect i still i mean i i still have a huge collection of um stuff from santa's villages and storybook lands and what they would do is um they would take these are sort of the original bumper stickers the original bumper stickers were actually pieces of cardboard and they what they do is they'd go out to the parking lot and they would wire this on to everybody's bumpers and then as you drove away you were um advertising santa's land in putney vermont or um Christmas City, USA, featuring a Santa's village in Lake George, New York, which is one I've actually been to. Um, North Pole, New York, home of Santa's workshop. Gaslight Village, which was also in Lake George. And um, Gaslight Village was, you know, your sort of roaring 20s sort of little village. And this was all stuff. A lot of these um, ones in Lake George were... Um, dealt with by Ardo Monaco, who had his own park, the land of Mike, but make believe in Upper J, New York. And years ago, I went and I visited, um, I visited him. Where's my water? Oh, my water's way over there. I'm going to grab it. Uh, I went out and visited him and, and shot some footage of him and talked to him. And he was, he was super interesting. But the, the cool thing about these is they're, um, they're screen print. So they're really you know they hold up really well but they are on this cardboard so uh, I have another one up there which is a Santa's Village Skyforce Skyforce Village which is um, a local L LA uh, not LA but Southern California it's a cool sign treasure books which is probably somebody that was competing against golden books but nice nice big easel back and so, you know, as you see, not all of my stuff is, uh, is, um, food related, but the good stuff is food related. This is a nice quick sign. Eh, never found a lot of quick signs. Um, eh, yeah, this is a little later when quick money has stopped being, uh, being red. And he's that sort of classic brown quick money. Um, nice illustration, kind of a boring, uh, freezer thing, you know, once again, who likes to make, I mean, I guess, I guess they're the same as like fudge bombs or something. I don't know. 
I don't know. Um, oh, here's another one of those. Oh, this one's really nice. Storytown, USA, Lake George, and Ghost Town. So that's pretty much all the all the ones that were in Lake George. Um, some more Bell Brand potato chip stuff. This is, who is this? Charlie Ruggles, who was a TV guy. Um, yeah, years ago we bought this big collection of stuff that was the scrapbooks of Bell Brand. And so, you know, a lot of these things were taped into those books, which was pretty interesting. It, somebody's written, that looks like I've written 1952 on it. Somehow I've written 1952. Somehow I, I knew when, when that was, you know, here's like a, some weird, oh, Cheetah the Chip. Is that Tarzan? Cheetah the Chip star of Western varieties. I wonder if that was Tarzan's cheetah. Probably not. Another bell brand. All hanging signs, you know. It's a cool helicopter. It's sad because all the tape, and you'll never. I mean, you could get this professionally conserved, then they could probably get that tape residue off there. Maybe. Maybe. But that's a that's always a whole expensive um, undertaking, which you really only do with um, serious movie posters. Here's a funny face two quart dump bin. So, you know, new with sugar. So this is probably from like 74, maybe 75 when they were making the bigger packs when they stopped. And this just folds up, you know, folds up into a box. You know, so there it would be. This flips around the top. And, you know, there you have it. Boom. Pretty cool. And that's the nice thing about some of this stuff. Boom. It just goes flat. And I can keep it in a box and not have to worry about uh, <laughs> having a giant thing. As far as those bee signs, spring house cleaning bee. And, you know, and these are, we didn't really get into this, but these are string signs. And so sort of the idea of a string sign is you print it on two sides. You know, it's, it's not printed on two sides. You print it on one side, fold it in half. And then all that the grocery store has to do is run a piece of string across and hang this. So they can hang a bunch of them. Really common way of display. This is a, this is a wild one. Free 12 kiss decals with ultrabite chance to win one in 10 gremlins. <laughs> This has got to be from oh, 1970. It expires 1970, so this is like probably 1969. Eh, really cool sign. You know, and how much advertising is there out there for the Gremlin? And you could see this is where a pad would have gone. You know, sorry, entry blanks are all gone, and there's some staple holes. It'd be really cool. And I mean, that's the thing about displays. You know, a lot of the a lot of the old guys, old collectors, are looking for tin Pepsi signs, but I always was looking for cardboard signs because that was, you know, the 1950s, 60s, 70s. All the signs were cardboard. They stopped doing all that tin signs because much easier to mass produce these kind of things and just uh, you know send them out to stores everywhere. Oh, this is a big one. Oh. Kids, get your big. Indian canoe because um, it was two little Indian kids that were the the post toasties uh, mascot characters which of course are completely politically incorrect now uh. <laughs> and it would have had this big inflatable canoe that stuck in there I had one of the canoes at one point and another one of these signs which I sold and the sad thing was the the plastic rubber whatever you want to call it got so messed up that you couldn't really inflate it anymore. So that was too bad. Eh, what are you going to do? What you going to do? What you going to do? What you going to do? This is kind of cool. This is original art for a trade show display. So SMI is, uh, address, address. This might just be, that's sketch for proposed contemporary exhibition stand, Reinhardt. So this is not, for any real company but so what they would do is um, this company would say this is the kind of displays that we can build you and then do this really pretty mock-up you know this beautiful gouache painting and um, and put it out there it's really nice 
really really nice really really nice um, let's see what else we got here these are um, these actually turned up at my local flea market the Rose Bowl one time they're uncut sheets of monster freezums and um, really really good looking really weird product I actually it's, uh, Jim Maley found a, an actual box of these which probably came from the same place I don't know but um, I had like three or four of these and they're um, they're progressive so some of them might be missing like one color so it's might you know it's hard to see it you know when you see them like this but they don't have the and these were made by Welch's Food which makes a lot of drinks Oh, Nerd Squared's here. So we got one watcher at least. We got somebody watching. Uh, Nerd Squared is my uh, my uh, to be determined guest this week. So you should go and watch her interview because it's super fun. She collects super fun stuff. Yeah, so this is a weird 70s monster product. And the person also had a bunch of artwork, which um, was for like a lot of other products, like these freeze pop products that they never made. And in here, of course, we have some uncut giant proof cereal boxes and nice Fruit Loops with a stuffed clown toy. Fun Fair. Fun Fair. Kellogg's Fun Fair was a whole line of these really terrible premiums that I, I can only imagine nobody remembers fondly. But look at that little girl. That's a, you know, it's like this really nice photorealistic photo of this little girl. Pretty great. And you got Toucan Sam, that sort of mid 70s toucan that that lasted pretty much into the 80s here's another fairly terrible uh just a really boring rice krispies with uh snap crackle and pop towels and kind of how i was saying the other day if you saw my one about general mills general mills had all these sort of interesting premiums that kids would like um in cheerios but a lot of these rice crispy treats a lot of there's a lot of really weird 70s um a lot of really weird 70s kellogg's premiums that you're just like oh you know towel and washcloth one dollar like you know what kid is is beating up their mom saying good god mom this is this is the this is the the thing i want you to spend the dollar on hey yeah this is kind of interesting this is orbiter one and it was kind of this big um plastic frisbee sort of thing and it was a uh, they sold them at chevron and i mean look at look at how gigantic this thing is and here's the here's the instructions on the back you see you put it together and then you can you can throw it and it sort of boomerangs back around space station satellite you know at chevron <laughs> and it's like what chevron in the world is gonna want to have a box of 50 of these that they have to get rid of <laughs> but you know it's like look at that art that art is is gorgeous just some gorgeous space art for i mean i'm sure i'm sure kids love this premium i'm sure this premium actually was incredibly fun but it's just it's just so funny when you run across stuff like this and you just think about logistically you know why don't you just sell some little frisbees that had the chevron you know like no this gigantic crazy bonkers thing this is a beautiful sign <laughs> pole parrot shoes rugged enough for dragon slayers there's the uh, pole parrot parrot who amazingly um hey grant um oh, who amazingly like they never he was always off model they were just like it's a parrot just you know redhead green body you can draw him however you want because like every pole parrot thing i've ever seen is done in a completely different illustration style but i mean that dragon is just bonkers and the kid is great and it's fully painted and it's got a really got this nice painterly look and just the design is weird you know it's like <laughs> you know we got we, we tip in we tip in the uh 
the text and you had a little bit of text on the bottom the the top text is a blue that doesn't really necessarily stand out incredibly where you know well against the dragon's uh his horns it's you know this is this is like i'm sure paul parrot just was like ah oh, we need a sign do a dragon whatever just get it done you know as opposed to like when you hear about kellogg's kellogg's was just like eh, you know everything was micromanaged and i'm gonna be doing post this weekend and you know I, I have some of the the paperwork and they would just they would go through hundreds of ideas just really really granular ideas trying to get to um trying to get to like the perfect thing and i'm sure they'd have to run through meeting after meeting after meeting this one's an older one this is probably i would say 30s litho oh sorry 1947 good job dating that one dan and kellogg's uh made the dog food called grow pup because i'm sure like in the 40s the dog food market became huge and um this is like a die cut uh circus wagon um you can see there's holes there's holes right here and here and i think i might have had a couple other pieces to this you know where it was like a whole circus wagon with these really weirdly illustrated dogs but you know nice it looks to be full color you know red yellow blue we're getting some greens and pinks yes yeah, this is full color but this thing's a little beat up it's got some tears <laughs> it's been been through the wars <laughs> and you know like i was talking about in the other one you know some of the, some of these displays are just perfect you know just like ah mint and then some of them they have been through it mr corriban says get quick relief of symptoms hay fever and sinus congestion corriban d um and this is uh you know this would have been you know it would have been a some sort of dump box this would have popped in the back this is a really weird dude um, with the really weird red nose, <laughs> you know, at the drugstore. <laughs> uh, it's just like, just bonkers. Uh, hey, Groovy Archives. Thanks for, thanks for stopping in. Um, Mr. Softy book covers, you know, so the Softy, Mr. Softy truck would come around. They'd probably hand these out right before, um, right before school was going into session. And you you fold them. Book covers were a big thing. Because I guess at school you'd, you know, I kind of, I don't remember, you know, I have a terrible memory, but I kind of remember doing like social studies and you walked in there at the beginning and everyone would get a book. And so they'd, you know, put a book cover on there. This is a, this is a great sign. I mean, I've probably said that too many times. These crazy Lancelot Link kind of monkeys doing monkey stuff. And normally I don't like photo signs, but when it's crazy monkeys, you know, fun to make, fun to eat, has somebody's drawn the 29 cents on there on this side, they've drawn it differently. You know, Jiffy Pop Popcorn, always a really classic product. Um, the red, the blue, the chef's hat, you know, the one, the, the monkey on the one side has a red shirt, blue background, blue shirt, red background. I mean, it's just, uh, I don't know, it's super cool. It's just super fun. And I think that one made it into Crazy Kids Food, our book. Extra one of those if somebody needs to cover a book. You know, this is sort of the... Sort of the... the Kellogg's is, is sort of... Uh, not my favorite era of Kellogg's. As you all probably saw, you know, I'm a, I'm a 60s Kellogg's guy. So when we, when we really started sliding into the 70s and we got Diggum and stick up for breakfast which was you know i think it was i think they maybe ran stick up for breakfast in 74 and 75 it just uh, stick up for breakfast uh, okay stick up for breakfast now this one this is oh this is also from some of that bell brand stuff and there were photos in there so this was this beautiful photo of yeah, it looks like it looks like maybe it's just a factory but you know it has the nice sign there and you know this presentation maybe they just built it you know 
mounted it on this nice piece of uh, nice piece of artboard. And uh, yeah. these ones are interesting. So what these are is they're proofs of billboards. So it's the uh, Poster Advertising Company Stock Design Pack C19 Chattanooga, Tennessee. So what you would do is if you're in your town and you wanted a Christmas billboard, um, they had this stock design and then they would print whatever you wanted in the in the space. And of course, you know, these are billboards. So they you know, the originals are going to be billboard size. What I don't I don't even know what billboard size is. It's like uh, six, you know, eight, eight by 20 feet. And I owned a billboard one time. Well, maybe I owned two billboards. And they come all folded up. And, the, you know, they're huge. They're incredible. Um, there's a guy online, which I, he's probably gone by now, but he used to sell billboards. You know, he cleaned out a billboard company and had all these billboards. And you could look at them all online, and they were, they were cool. And you're like, if I had a giant wall, I would like one of those. But since I do not have a giant wall, I just have some of these. Your best in 65. Car name here. Nice snowman. Christmas one, 1965. Thank you for dating that. And this is a national poster company. The other one was poster advertising company. So, you know, who, who knows how many billboard companies there were in the country. Here's another nice Christmas one. These beautiful buildings. Yeah, these would be gorgeous framed up. You know, pretty easy for me to say. Gorgeous for somebody to frame these all up. And this one, really nice designy, um, couple of ornaments, and you could have advertised anything in there. And there's a magazine called Sign of the Times, which I used to have a bunch of issues of. And it was the outdoor advertising magazine, and they had all the billboard companies were in there, but they'd always have like a sort of They'd have some roundup pages where they'd show all the different billboards that were up. But the, the images were literally about a half an inch by an inch. And you're like, come on, guys. You know, give me give me three inches by four inches or something. You know, do you, do you really have to kill me with showing me, like, some of the most beautiful billboards I've ever seen? Postage stamp size. <sighs> um... Now this one is a movie poster. Well, it's not really a poster, but I mean, I mean, it is a movie poster from 1961. Fabulous World of Jules Verne, and there's this this uh, I don't know if he's was he Czechoslovakian, this director called Carl Zeman that made all these sort of weird Jules Verne movies, but he made them look like woodblock prints. And if if you're a fan of design, you should you should go check out Carl Zeman. Um, I've always been a huge fan. Um, this is about, I think this might be the only poster I have. And, you know, it's, it's like called a lobby poster or something. I don't know what this size is called. But they're, they're really they're really amazing films. Um, you know, I mean, uh, from story-wise, they're terrible, of course. But graphically, they're super, super interesting. Super, super interesting. Um, Fairyland Forest, Conneaut Lake, Conneaut Lake Park. I don't know where that is says on here somewhere and as you can see open weekends in may and open all open daily all summer so they you know these kind of places would run these sort of shorter um they wouldn't run you know it's not like disneyland would be open 365 days um and you know somebody you know these were on ebay so somebody when the park closed carted off a couple hundred of them um these are really interesting because these this this was from a printer in Long Beach, California, and they printed all these sort of generic signs. And um, here come the helicopters. Um, and I, I this guy just had stacks and stacks of them, so I went through them all and and picked out the ones that were kind of appealing to me. They were all generic, so anybody you know, like back when you'd print them up, anybody could come in and buy them. I mean, he probably did custom jobs too, but these ones were just available for anybody. You know, any store could buy this gifts and souvenirs, tack it up on their wall, have that beautiful sign that looks very professionally printed. Um, 
this one is a um, this sign would have gone in the newsstand and so we've got Linus on there and color comics will brighten your day so Blade Tribune which I think I think might be San Francisco we um, would be running Peanuts comics and so that's how they get you interested in that this one's cute this is the craft vegetable man which they also made a vinyl figure of but this is a super cool weird 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 die cut sign um, just for craft uh, vegetable dressings and um, he's made out of tomatoes cherry tomatoes got fruit in the hat just a weird weird guy <laughs> neat die cut um, I have the puppet for this somewhere Make believe with Libby's puppet pad. Children's play. Oh, puppet. Wait, puppet pad. Children play time with this puppet pet. Why does he pad up there? Oh, yours only 50 cents when you buy a jar of Libby's pickles. And there's, you know. Oh, it's. That's. Duh. It's a hot pad and a puppet. So you can use it to take out the hot stuff, or <laughs> you can use it. And I have the puppet. He was stapled on here. I, he's he's in my puppet box. I'm on one of the few people that has a puppet box. Um, yeah, so he's a he's a children play puppets, and then mom and dad use it as a hot pad. Jeez, think of that. Appeals to everybody. This one's kind of <laughs> fantastic hair products. Best best in hair service. Revolutionary. Improved. Shut up, the African mask. Like, oh my god. But that's you know that's what I love. I love the ephemeral nature of nature of signs. And then this is this is the sugar crisp steals the show. Nice sugar crisp. Probably also based on an ad, but it has the box there. And this this again, I think we were talking about. There's like trolley car signs. And signs that would go up in the subway and things. I think that's what this one is. Because it's kind of this longer size. Not really suited for a grocery store. More suited for some sort of um, vehicle or outdoor advertising. This one's um, a company that did design. And then this was um, a playground design from the 60s. You know, sealed in plastic. Maybe the... No, it's been sealed for a long time, but just really nice, really nice. I wanted to collect um, vintage playground stuff at one point. Um, then never really got around to it. Here's another picture of either Bell Brand factory or offices. Another one of those nice photos. Nice oversized photos, protected for all time. Here's, this is this is this one's fun. Mission from Mars was one of the first 3D animated. Um, I don't know if I call it a cartoon, but it's from 1992, and it was a show, and it was an animated like a 30 minute special. And I was starting to collect in '92, so I was starting to put some stuff away, you know. And I mean, I started putting some stuff away in the in the uh, in the mid mid to late 80s and if I had put more stuff away actually some of that stuff would have been good now which is kind of funny to think about but as, as it is we all move around and we all can't keep everything but the funny thing was I really love this I love the graphics it was a Snickers thing it's called Mission to Mars and so I went and I collected all the signs I could I collected the bags I you know I was really into it and then just uh, like a year ago a guy that I, I knew from the toy shows I think I posted something on one of my on Instagram was like I worked on that show so it's like the show that I really loved from 92 which is what is that 30 38 years ago eight no eight eight and uh, 28 28 years ago I worked on that show so that was like super cool you know, and I got to sort of, you know, because a lot, of, a lot of people that create shows, they don't get a lot of feedback on the shows. There's a couple of nice. Uh, why do I have two of these? Because you can never have enough toppy stuff. 
probably like one of the greatest characters. I think he's one of the one of the greatest characters. One of the most expensive lunch boxes. And actually, one of these is missing the tail. And I think I have the tail somewhere. So in other words, he lost the tail to me. And uh, oh, on the other display show, I showed um, one of these girls, one of these Dairy Queen girls. And then this is a different design. It's really cute. And she still has her fingers. I haven't, I haven't, uh, <laughs> I haven't destroyed her fingers. This one's pretty crazy. This is, this is broken. How does this, oh, this went like this, I think. It's got broken. Um, the Fresh Guys. So it's a Wonder Bread sign. And it would have, I don't know how this would have worked. But, oh, we're the Fresh Guys and we'll be right back. So they would have put this sign in the bread rack when they ran out of Wonder Bread. And then they'd probably tip it this way. Oh, then they'd probably tip. That's what they would do. Let's look at this. This is interesting. So this would show out normally. And then when they sold out, they would tip it up. So the, the fresh guys are cool. There's a, um, they made a bank of them, which is neat. So it's kind of interesting. So that's, we've gone through one of two boxes and we've taken 35 minutes. <laughs> So we'll probably be here about an hour. Yeah, this box isn't that deep. So we'll probably finish in about an hour. And if anybody does have any questions, um, I am I can I am watching I am watching the uh, watching the uh, comments. What is that called? I'm drinking water a lot tonight because it's kind of it's kind of warm in here because I have my big light on. Because everything looks better under the big light. Ah, uh, let go. Uh, tops candy apple bubble gum. This is like, you know, proof of the box. We talked a little bit about ice cream signs. This one's really cool. Eat it all. Super fun. Now these next ones are some Dennis the Menace ones, and they did um. They, they did a whole Dairy Queen thing with Dennis the Menace. And there's a store here in L.A. called Chica Boom. And the guy there must have cleaned out a Dairy Queen because he had tons of these signs. And we were doing a bunch of trading. And so I like tried to get all the, not all of them, but a bunch of Dennis ones. Especially the rings one, which was a nice promotion because people used to seriously collect rings. And this is from 73. Nice Dennis, full color. A lot of the signs were um, like neon they were neon, like a neon green, and then just printed black. So it's nice to get a um, let's get a full color one. A boatload of French fries, little potato guy, super neat. Uh, what's this? Oh, I, I mentioned this before. This is this is original art for the captain crunch ring so so this is so this you know um if you've ever seen the captain crunch ring captain crunch the first um premium they did which i showed the captain crunch box on the uh on the quaker episode which is zero box one um they did a series of eight rings including some of them were just sort of redos of the the quaker crazy rings but there was a captain crunch figural ring there's a cannon ring and a cutlass ring were the sort of three prime, really ones that were very primary. And if you look at this, like, oh my God, it's, you know, it says Captain Crunch on it. There's a skull and crossbone on the sides It's this beautiful sculpted cannon. When the original ring came, when the actual ring came out, it was just this little doopy cannon that moved, but it didn't say Captain Crunch. It wasn't these beautiful colors it's it's like talk about overselling what you're going to be bringing you know i'm sure the the premium designer got this and was just like huh that's what you want but it, you know it was the inaugural premium and you know when you look at the captain crunch figure ring it's just this it's about this big it's just this little flat figure of captain <sighs> so yeah this was yeah this is a uh, this is and on the back it says 
This is an original design of creative merchandisers. Reproduction is prohibited without permission. So, you know, there probably were six, eight, ten of these companies out there that designed the premiums. There's R&B, F&F did all, all those mugs we talked about at one point. And so, you know, it's kind of it's kind of neat. And that somebody had turned up a bunch of stuff from the Captain Crunch and and I kept I kept that and I think I have I have a design for um maybe a telescope. And I moved the other ones on. Um this is the box that actually got me collecting cereal boxes. This is the one that started me on collecting cereal boxes. Um, I bought these diving Tonys um, at the grocery store in 1988. And I was like, wow, these are really cool premiums. And it got me thinking about premiums. And so 1988, in another year, I was, I, I, I found Toy Shop Magazine, but this, this box was the one that got me thinking about premiums. And um, it's a really good looking box with a really neat premium. The premium, you'd put it in a soda bottle and when you squeezed it, he'd sink. And when you let it go, he'd come back up. And so it was just really nice design. They're, they're beautiful little premiums. You find them, you know, I have six or eight of them somewhere. Um, just a really beautiful premium. Really, the art is nice. Uh, just really well handled. I would love to hear whose idea this was. Um, have I ever owned new Captain Crunch rings? Oh yeah, I owned them all at one point. Um, I sold most of my premiums. I have the Captain Crunch figural ring. I don't think I have any of the others. I have maybe the top of the Brunhilde spinning ring. There, they show up. I mean, I mean the Captain Crunch figural ring, I don't think has ever been more than $100. Maybe, maybe it used to be $100. Maybe 50 to 100 I bet you if you look for a while, you'd find one. But yeah, this is, this is really the box that, um, started me on a lot of this quest and so it's it's pretty fun to see that um and i think i saved this one or maybe i just saved the back and then maybe i got this from Dwayne dimmick or something i don't really quite remember i think maybe i cut out the back and saved the back and then you know like six months later i was like why didn't i just save the box and then i you know tracked this one down uh, which I don't think was that hard to track down, but um, yeah, this was kind of the beginning of a lot of stuff. Um, let's see, this is since we're already on dinosaurs, <laughs> the box top with the alley oop jungle game. Um, sometimes you find beat the hell game box tops, and you keep them because they're so gorgeous. <laughs> oh man this is so Disneyland for, for years used to sell these they were just sort of photo prints of the of the attraction posters so I bought this at one point and it's very dusty because it was probably on my wall for many many years here's another uh, racially insensitive I guess I should I should do a trigger warning nowadays um Racially insensitive, Jiffy Pop. Look him here. And you know, um, I I I will admit that I I do have a number of uh, racially insensitive Indian pieces in my American Indian pieces in my collection. And you know, it, it's of a time. I mean, should these be burnt? You know, should I take my Indian orange packs and? throw it in the ocean uh, no I don't think so I mean it's not like I have them on display um, in the uh, um, in the capital of uh, California or something this one I'm not gonna pull out but it's a uh, it's a it's a dog food maybe I can't pull it out oh it's all sealed yeah, maybe. we got nothing better to do if we can't pull stuff out of it, their bags and take a look at it now, when when are we going to get back to looking at any of this stuff? Probably never. And Oh yeah, we, uh, now I'm glad I pulled it out. 
and it, it's grow pup so it's Kellogg's and it's you know we've he's there's a doggy I mean, it's just blank on the back, but what do we have on here? We got Dennis the Menace, Art Link Letter, some Dennis stuff in there, He's TV guy, Grow Pup, Grow Pup, uh, the picture of the T-Bone box. This is a really nice box, this T-Bone box. I have it somewhere. We'll, we'll pull that out when we do dog food. Maybe I'll pull this back out when we do dog food. We might do dog food someday. Now I've got this tape all over the place. See, that's the problem with pulling stuff out of these things, you know. Then you gotta put it back and hopefully not get tape all over your other stuff. Um, why is this in here? I don't know why this is in here. This is really cool. This is a clip art book, 1959, and so it's just full of clip art. So you would you'd buy this, and so then when you were putting together your stuff, you'd have all these letters and little little dudes that you could. Uh, in your newsletters, if you wanted to have a little guy playing, like I old guy in Cloud Nine, and then this I think was like a it was a Clipper Creative Art service, so they probably would have sent you one of these every month. So you would um you would uh, subscribe to it. They'd send you one of those every month, and you'd use them for your for your church newsletter or whatever. Now this stuff. Uh, one day at the flea market. Oh, well, this is, uh, I don't know. This is random. Stuff. Well, that's, you know, whatever you, oh, oh man, this stuff's interesting. Um, I love this piece. Idaho Joe's potato pancake mix. Look at those little potato guys. They don't even have faces. They just have arms and legs. And a guy rolled up to the flea market with all this stuff. And it was, it was, um, a lot of them were proof boxes, you know, so he cleaned out a printer. Um, does this have a location? El Monte, California. So it was a Southern California printer and it was just random stuff. And we're all, we're all just like, ah, we must dig and try and find the best of the best. And, um, see, why is this in here? I have no idea, but there was just, it just varied all over the place. And I think I showed really cool Ralph's so this is from the Ralph's supermarket um, Ralph's grocery store why is this dusty probably for when they worked on our house so this is this is a Ralph's grocery store piece and probably this is just some sort of generic candy that some company had and so Ralph printed up the boxes and they put them in there this is really cool this is this is the wrapper for a whisk broom so they would print these up and then this would go around the whisk broom so you could price it and that would be in the store. It's like a little bubble bath, pencil pack bubble bath with some really hideous kids art. Oh, and this is a Dolly Madison cookies. So this is how, this is a box of cookies that Dolly Madison, old fashioned assorted cookies. So these would have been some really terrible baked cookies that no one would want to eat. Nut Bros. Nut Bros. I like that name. Nut Bros. And you know, we can see the variations of the cookies. Where's, where's this at? Oh, Los Angeles. Super cool. Here's a really nice... Um, see, and that's what's, that's what's so fun about digging through these boxes. It's like, you know, I, I probably have never, I've never photographed I mean, I, probably, I photographed a few of these things, but not all of them. Here's this nice Laura Scudder's Mayflower potato chips box. I mean, how, how gorgeous is that? You know, it's not, not necessarily what I collect, but, you know, if I run across it, I collect it. <laughs> if it's good looking, I collect it. Cal Ray Home Oven Assorted Cookies. They sold a lot of these boxes of terrible assorted cookies. That one has raisins in it. I mean, oh God, these kind of cookies were just, just dreadful. Oh, hmm, okay. More stuff there. 
hi-hat and you can see see the really designy dude in there almost looks like mr peanut really nice this is also a cal ray cal ray california right this one's 19 oh man you can almost make out a date I wonder if this one had a date on it i didn't see a date on this one no and you know these jerks how hard is it is it gonna kill you to put a date on your stuff <sighs> is it gonna kill you is it gonna kill you oh what's this what is this okay this is <laughs> this is another one of those clipper service things so this one's all in the giant mailer let's see we got a date on it it comes from peoria illinois 1959 46 cents to ship it went to the virginia richmond enterprises 1610 north wilcox hollywood 28 california we could try to drive up there right now um if i had a long enough of course you know here's this it's talking about it a letter you know like here's like here's like a little booklet that they'll they'll put together oh no it's a it's a quarterfold thing you know that's something they can do here's some weird stuff this is good two bongs and a bang and i'm home two bongs for that kid the kid needs not one bong he needs two bongs it, how, how language changes over time howdy partner come to church on sunday and here's a clipper index Another clipper index. And then we get to the multi ad services clipper creative art service. Maybe that, oh, this is June 59. So that other book should have been in with this. But it was just like a little bonus book. And man, oh man, we got weird stuff in here. Those are what we can do with some of these. Let's see. Let's see what we got in here. We got, we got, we got these tonal bells and buses and whatnot. We got these animals, including the weird monkeys and the owl and the turtle. And those look like they were ripped out of, you know, some uh, natural history stuff. This one's great. I love this. Weird bent nails. And then baby heads. You mean I have B O? What else does the baby say? What's your opinion of Marilyn Monroe? Congress passed passed a tax reduction. You'll have to give me twenty four months to pay. You're going to split up my territory. <laughs> weird and then and we got some weird texture ones some really big ones and these ones are huge 11 by 17 and of course the obligatory jesus kids praying stained glass windows dogs and cats living together <sighs> oh man look at the, then we got this look at this kid oh man that's our kid that is our kid look at his heads combinations of his heads and cowboy oh, this weird shit. oh my god oh my oh here we go and let's go black and white and full color for all the guys <laughs> hula dancer And just in case, here's some more smaller baby heads, some smaller monkeys, smaller giraffes. And that's the clipper service. That's that's your clipper service for 1959. I think I have another one of these somewhere. Um, I definitely have, have some other ones of these. And um, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, whatever. So, but they're so much fun. It's just like, how interesting. 
what a what a peek into uh, you know what was going on in 59 what a peek um now these potato chips and that's the other thing is we can maybe you know these foil things are so impossible to photograph unless your name is Jason Liebig. If your name is Dan Goodsell, you're never going to get a good uh, picture of these uh, photo things. Um, well, look at these. Really. This, this was uh, when Hasbro shipped me my Mystery Toast games I kept outside of the box. Because that's the sentimental kind of weirdo I am. Spun honey. This this is what I call just as terrible as a sign can be. <laughs> they don't use the space well. They don't. Nothing is good about. Although now that I think about it, I did not realize the name of that wise owl was Peppy. I probably owned this sign for twenty years and uh, never registered in my brain that his name was Peppy. Right? Am I right? Toppy the elephant, God bless you. God bless you. That's uh that's the that's the altar of religion that I that I uh that I worship at. And this was part of that um this was part of the Mission to Mars thing. They did a weird tie-in with uh with FTD, which is floral delivery. And I I probably went to some floral place and found that. I don't even remember. These are called ad mats. And what ad mats are, they're kind of hard to see. Let me get that in relief. What they are is you would use this to make a printing plate that you would then, um, if you want to run this ad in the newspaper, this you would use this to make the copper plates. And they're they're like raised, you know, they're 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 relief. And those ones are, you know, for Kellogg's Yogi Bear stuff. We already did one of those. This is the original art to a coloring book, which uh, is done in uh, felt, and this is an actual crayon that they used, and it's gotten squashed over the years. This probably shouldn't be at the bottom of the box. It should be at the top of the box. Not getting so squished. This is cool. Alice in Wonderland shoulder bags. Um, so as you can see, this is the top of the box. You'd open it up and then use that as the display to sell these um, these bags. And they had an Alice and a Donald and a Pluto. And so there'd be you know there'd be eight or be or nine or twelve of them in the box. And you just pop the lid off, set it up, and you're ready to rock and roll. Win this gentle donkey. What kid does not want to win a donkey? I was watching The Price is Right today, and they gave this guy this old beat-up car, you know. Ha, ha, ha. But back in the day, kids would want to win this donkey. You know, there's probably a lot of kids in America that would be like, that donkey will be mine. And a hundred dollars in groceries. So I mean, what kid wouldn't be the coolest kid, you know, first day of school comes in with their donkey and their donkey cart? Dan good sell. Kid with the donkey. There's a little uh thing for the magic cow. These are old potato chip bags. Hey look. Potato chip bags. Oh, man. How are we doing on time? It's 6.58. Uh, running long as usual. Running long. Crappy sign. Apples and chips. Crappy sign. Uh, anything else good in here? Just some ads. Oh, there's some... Someone was just asking me about Bozo... The other day, who's asking me about Bozo? Oh, yeah. Eh, so I do have something Bozo. I'm always surprised at what I have. Talk about this. What else do we have? Anything else? Oh, this is cute. Yeah, this is. Oh, man. Let's see. 
We're getting there. We're getting there. We're almost there. Just a few more things. Nice Huck and Yogi uncut and flat of this box. Um, it's not an uncommon box, but it's neat. This is cool. A little die cut a punchy. And it's like foil, so it's catch your eye. Catch your eye. Two bongs and a donkey. Yep. Two bongs and a donkey. Uh, Star Wars trading cards uh, from Wonder Bread, which were uh, definitely the first Star Wars thing that I remember having from the movie. Uh, this New Fizz is a little more uh, actually selling the product. New Fizz 100 drinks on my little finger. Cool little Circus Viewmaster sign. Viewmaster did a lot of advertising, and it's all pretty nice. Um, this is a Yogi Bear's Honey Fried Chicken, How Sweet It Is, uh, 1968. Um, so I, I don't know if this was a chain or if it was like a product that they sold someplace, you know, like at Bob's Big Boy or something. I don't know. Try our Honey Fried Fish and Shrimp, too. Sounds delicious to me. Um... This one's, this one was on my wall for many, many, many years, and it's in terrible shape. But it's the, uh, it's the one sheet for the Dr. Seuss movie, The Five Thousand Fingers of Dr. T. This was another, uh, oh, thing that got me into collecting was, I had a book. Maybe it was, oh man, this, this poster is gonna tear apart as we speak. Good job, Dan. Um, this was definitely a uh, f finding out about this movie was was important in my initial collecting. Oh, just one more piece. This is a really interesting thing. It's like, what is this Ivy Man? And down in the corner it says, "D. Patty Freeling." What this is, it's it's a presentation thing for a cartoon. Here's Ivy Man. Here's Ivy Man in action, right? And these are cells. So what did Patty Freeling, who did, who is well known for um, the uh, Pink Panther cartoon, and I'm sure tons of other cartoons. I'm not the biggest master of um, cartoon stuff, but they would have made these up as pitches. And then in the front, there's a little pouch that has all the information talking about Ivy Man. Ivy Man is a superhuman character with one exception. He is actually a vegetable. And then there's, you know, here's some some pitches as to what the stories would be like. Um, bubble gun trouble. So they would, you know, paint these up, make this, this little presentation folder. And we found like two or three of these. I think three of them. I, the other ones I think are a different size. I don't know where they are. It's a good question. You would think they'd all be together. But it's just such an interesting look at how how you would go about pitching a cartoon back in back in the day. <laughs> they would literally do all this work and um, you know, show up probably at CBS or whatever. And oh, the Yogi Yes, there were Yogi Brown there were Yogi Bear campgrounds. So maybe that Yogi Bear chicken was sold there. So they would show up with these presentation folders. Um and try and sell them these uh, cartoon ideas. Now we just uh, do a bunch of stuff, type up a PDF, and send it on its way. Um, so that's uh, that's that's the bonus episode. Um, I'm sure most people are going to be watching this uh, on YouTube after the fact. But it, hey, thanks everybody that came by, Todd and. And Anna and Groovy Archives and uh, Grant and MM. I don't know who MM is, but thank you for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Um, and I'll be back on Sunday at our normally scheduled time. And, you know, I'm going to pop in and do these every once in a while. You know, I was kind of bored tonight and kind of feeling meh. So I just wanted to do something, do something fun, dig through some stuff, get a little deeper into the collection. So uh, thanks, everybody, and uh, 
We'll uh, see you all in, uh, ooh, we had eight whole people on at some point. So that's pretty good. So we'll see you all in the future.